Oh, oh, oh. Sounds so low. That was scary, guys. I'm scared. Hello, YouTube. Today, we're going to try a new camera angle. And also, today, we're going to try and make this video a fast one. This is the Lamzu Thorn. It needs little to no introduction and has been generating all the hype recently. The Thorn is the second ever mouse to be released by Lamzu. Unfortunately, it's experienced numerous delays, but it's finally here and ready for all of us to try. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'll start you guys off with a summary just to save time for those of you who are busy out there if you want to know my thoughts. I never thought I'd ever use an Ergo mouse again. Ever since the Superlight released, I got off the EC1. That was my main mouse for the longest time. But this is my new main, surpassing all other symmetrical mice I've been using so far for my relaxed claw grip. In terms of shape, this mouse isn't actually the most ideal for those of you who want a full cover your hand on the mouse kind of palm grip, but rather I'd consider this an ergo mouse designed for a relaxed claw, which is the supreme grip style. In terms of build quality and etc, it's Lamzu. They don't miss. Easily a top recommendation if you think the shape might be it for you. So in terms of details, features and unboxing, the mouse costs 92 US dollars on the Lamzu website, which is a bit of a weird number. I don't really know why that's the case. But for those of us in Australia, expect the mouse to cost the same as the Atlantis at uh, Osmod Shop for probably about 150 Australian dollars. The mouse comes in the standard Lamzu packaging, which we've all seen many, many times before with the Atlantis. Features a 3395 sensor with a Nordic MCU, making this 4K compatible with all the existing Lamzu dongles if you guys already have one of those 4K ones. It weighs 52 grams. Features optical switches this time, instead of the blue shell pink dots that they've been using on the Atlantis. You get all the usual Lamzu accessories, so I'm gonna just skip most of this unboxing aspect. Uh, one thing to note, however, is that unlike the Atlantis, this does not come with stock grips. I have provided feedback to Lamzu, telling them that their grips are a bit thick compared to things like the core pads or the Pulsar Super Grips. Don't know if they're gonna make any changes, but... Who knows if the final production units will actually come with grips, I just know that the ones I got did not. Now for me, the most special thing about this unboxing experience is always this writing. They previously had one for the Atlantis as well, and now the Thorn. But why is this one special? Because I wrote this. To be specific, I translated the writing from the Chinese version they had into this and pretty much rewrote the whole thing. I will say though, now that I've read it again, I'm not very happy with how this turned out. But the main issue was that it was rather difficult to translate the whole thing, or the entire meaning, uh, without making the passage too long to be printed on the box. But, oh well, here we are, this is some Yifang writing. Now, on a side note, for the upcoming Maya, the bro from Lamzu did not write a Chinese passage. They came to me and said, we don't really know what to write, do you have any ideas? So, well, better look forward to that, because now we have Yifang original creative writing on the Maya box. Now moving to build quality, this is standard Lamzu build quality. There is no creaking, no flexing or whatever, it's just all around perfection. If you've held an Atlantis, then you should know how this will feel. At least for my standards, I cannot fault this. The sensor and placement. So 3395, 4K compatible, but the most important thing here is sensor placement. And I just want to give Lamzu a huge amount of credit in regards to this, because the sensor placement on the Thorn is phenomenal for an Ergo. This is something that I really, really look into because every single other Ergo I have tried in recent times are all terrible at sensor placement. Mostly because they're all too far back on the mouse. Whether that be the Death Adder V3, the Zowie EC, or the Vanser that I tried. Like, look at this, right? Side by side, the EC2CW versus the Lamzu. Do you see how much further down the EC1 is compared to the Thorn when you put them side by side like that? The Thorn here is flawless. Now one thing to know about sensor placement is that it's influenced by how you're intended to grip it. So if you were to grip the mouse with a fingertip grip, you won't feel the difference as much. But with most ergos, they expect you to grip the mouse entirely, put your hand onto it, reach forward, and therefore the sensor placement starts being emphasized if it's further back and it really does feel weird. A thorn, however, does not have any of this problem. Sensor placement is extremely important towards how responsive the mouse feels towards your movements, whether that be a micro adjustment or a big swipe. Now, I don't want to swing my arm across the pad to do a 180, and then when I turn around I start looking at the ground because the sensor placement was off and then the movements are no longer in a flat horizontal line, they start going sideways. I want to do a turn and have my crosshair height 
the same when I turn around, maintaining head position. Poor sensor placement will feel extremely inconsistent, bad, and good sensor placement makes the mouse work magic. So moving to clicks, the Thorn here features optical switches, unlike the Atlantis which was featuring blue shell pink dot mechanical switches. Now, I haven't tested for click latency or any of that stuff, but I'm sure channels like House Gaming will provide that information. What I can say, however, is that this is the best feeling optical implementation that I've tried so far. Compared to, say, the XM2WE, the Pulsar X2 Bruce Lee here, Razer Opticals and all of those. So XM2WE would come in second. The main issue with XM2WE is that the clicks are very stiff, so I don't particularly mind, but I know people will have problems with that. The Pulsar X2 Bruce Lee here has opticals. They're really light and responsive, but there are still times when they just feel a bit mushy. And needless to say, Razer opticals are by far the worst feeling opticals I've ever tried, uh, despite performing well. They're just very mushy and unenjoyable. But on the Lamzu Thorn here, nice, crisp, responsive optical switches. You just don't really get that anywhere else. The side buttons also feel extremely nice and crisp, if that is your thing, but I never really use any. Now onto weight distribution. Once again, Lamzu nailed the weight distribution. This mouse feels like nothing. Like, it's crazy that this mouse weighs 52 grams for the size. It's lighter than the Atlantis, but it looks much bigger. It's actually just crazy to me how light this mouse feels in your hand when you use it. It just feels like nothing because it's so light already and the mouse shape is big and well distributed. Now talking about skates and skate replacements. So the skates on this mouse have a really interesting design. Whoever did the cat on this really went hard and made the base plate look like thorns with all these uh, lines everywhere while the skates themselves are supposed to be like petals that would be on these vines. The skates are literally all over the place. They're all different sizing. And no, these two are not buttons. These two are literally skates as well. The DPI button is now here on this top little black dot, while the bottom here is a switch. Aftermarket skate companies are gonna have a lot of fun making their aftermarket skates to be like this. You know, seven different pieces, all of different dimensions. But in terms of design, the skates work perfectly fine. So I would still prefer just to have one front piece and one back piece, but they probably couldn't change this up anymore and if they did the weight would change and so on, but no issues so far yet. Normally with lots of smaller skates, if you use an Xsoft pad and you press down into the pad, you start getting base plate scratching, but I have yet to experience that using this mouse and the Xsoft Indigon Pro here. I'm pretty sure the combined surface area of all these skate pieces still results in it being decently sized. Now, Lamzu stock skates are one of the best on the market as well, and I've been using these, partially also because there's no core pad replacements yet, but these are great. So the most important thing here now is shape and comparisons. And this is also why I love this mouse so much. So the first thing I must point out is that this mouse is not a full palm shaped ergo mouse. If you guys are looking for that full palm grip, you're gonna spread your hands as wide as you possibly can and grip onto the mouse. Similar to how you would do on a Zowie EC or a Death Adder, then this is not necessarily for you. You should probably just wait for the Pulsar X Lite V3 instead, which is more similar to those ones where you could full palm it. The mouse is designed more as a palm slash claw hybrid, which means that it's extremely comfortable for relaxed claw grip. And what a coincidence, that is my grip. So the reason I say this isn't too perfect for palm is that the left side hump here is very, very tall, like very tall. So now if we were to compare this to the Zowie EC2 here, uh, I can't really get this angle right, but you can see that the Lamzu Thorn is still a little bit taller on the hump on the left here. Which means that part of your hand is going to rest on there, but then the sides are sloped very aggressively that it no longer tapers to how your hands would rest if you were to full palm this. You would have a bit of an area here that's just elevated off because the mouse just slopes too much on the right here. See how the section of your hand would change depending on how you're gripping it? If I was to relax claw this, then I don't touch this part and the right side here perfectly tapers to how my hands would be on this area. Whereas if I was the full palm grip and I have contact on my right side of my hand here, then the left side starts getting elevated and I can't actually rest that on the mouse properly. So the extremely tall hump on this mouse makes relaxed claw feel really comfortable because it gives you that sense of security and locked in feeling. In addition to that, the side curvature here, because it's not entirely flat, versus the height of the button and where you'd actually click it, this gives you a really nice pinching feeling, like the positioning is pretty much perfect. And if you guys have watched a lot of my mouse review videos, 
I would repeatedly talk about how with this claw grip you want that pinching feeling to be able to accurately hit that shot. It really influences how your click timing would be, and this just does that extremely well. It's perfectly suited to how claw grip would be. And so all I could say about this shape is that it's an absolute banger and it slaps seriously hard. If you look at something like the EC2 here, it's a bit more flat, especially towards the back here, and you can relax your hand a bit more on this, giving you that full palm, instead of the Lamzu, which forces your hands to curl in a bit. So in this case, if you just look at how my fingers are when I'm holding the EC2 here with a full palm grip, you can see that my hands are a lot more relaxed, everything's kind of like sloping and such. Whereas if you were to do the same with an Lamzu and hold it, your fingers start becoming really angled, there's this gap here, simply because the height and the sloping itself does not actually fully suit to you relaxing your hand and trying to hold the whole thing. It suits a lot more towards slightly angled fingers for a relaxed claw. Now, if you want my thoughts, I think if you're currently a full palm gripper, you like the Zaoi EC or things like that, you should still consider buying a thorn, then adjust to the thorn shape and how you would hold it that way. Because this will slowly transition you to something similar to a relaxed claw grip, and after going from full palm to aggressive claw to relaxed claw, I've come to acknowledge that relaxed claw supremacy. So realistically speaking, aggressive claw probably still plays the best due to your hands being in a constant ready state. You're locked in with tension, ready to click down and shoot. You become really fast. But the problem with that is that it becomes extremely fatiguing that you yourself probably aren't even aware of. And by fatiguing, I don't mean over an extended period of time. I mean, even within one game or two games, your daily session, you will start to fatigue over time. And your consistency drops heavily as you play because of that fatigue in your hand and arm from tension, you're trying to aggressively hold the mouse. Things become unstable at some point, difficult to control, questions like how did I miss that shot? How did I whiff that start to come to your mind? Especially when you're in a tense situation where you have to hit a shot or you're holding an angle and you start feeling a little bit jittery. Now, relaxed claw, has far less fatigue than aggressive claw, while still maintaining most of the advantages of claw grip. So over time, as your mouse control gets better, you will also relax out of your aggressive claw just because your hands are now capable of controlling the mouse without needing all that tension and readiness. So who should buy this? Well, if you want an ergo, you've been waiting for an ergo, you want something that fits your hand a bit better, or you know, want that relaxed claw grip mouse, this is it. There is Nothing I can say negative about this, other than the shape being subjective to your preferences. Like, many reviewers have been praising this. Uh, a few of them haven't liked it as much, such as Bordzi, but he likes things like the Death Adder, the full palm grip mice, the ones that are a bit lower profile and doesn't enjoy this as much, so that's a preference issue. But other than that, I can't recommend this enough. I just can't recommend this enough. This is my favorite mouse now. Like, I'm maining this, because it just fits exactly what I wanted. Once again, I do want to give Lamzu a huge shout out for sending this through, but also for creating an absolute banger of a mouse. Now, I really don't know what it'll take at this point to make a mouse that I will like more than the Thorn in terms of performance, but as always, all eyes on the X2H now. It's the only upcoming mouse that I know of which might challenge the Thorn for my personal preferences, but until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.